Hey, thank you for joining us at Word of His Power. On behalf of Pastors Jay, Sarah, and Rebecca, we would like to welcome you to today's service. If you have any prayer requests or praise reports, please message us to our website at wohp.org. Enjoy the service and have a great day. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise God, praise God. You may all be. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your holy name. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Glory to God. Thank you. Hallelujah. This morning, after I was finishing my preparation and getting ready, I sent this Mother's Day prayer after my prayer to many people and I would like to it came from my spirit and I thought I'll record this and I don't want to change this is what is my Mother's Day prayer for all mothers that may you flourish in every way as 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, May your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. And may you prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers in Jesus Christ. I bless you all in Jesus' name. So happy Mother's Day to all those who are here and all those who are listening to us. Praise God. One of the most important instruction, not only in the Bible, but you see in the book of Luke, even Jesus, when he learned to obey his mother, he grew in stature and wisdom, the Bible says. So no matter what, how old you are, if you have mother still on earth, listen to her, honor her, bless her. Bible says so, because when we honor our father and mother, the blessings of God says that it may all well, it may go well with you and that you may live long. So that is the blessing of being celebration of Mother's Day. So we'll continue our study. Last week, we started studying about the seven pillars of prosperity. And as we continue our study, let us hold fast to our confession of faith because the Bible says in Hebrews Hold fast to your confession, faith, because Jesus Christ is our apostle and high priest of our confession. So say this with me, oh, I give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for you are good to me all the time. And your mercy endures forever. For God is good. And his mercy endures forever. I am a spirit being. I have a soul. I live in this body. Because I am born again. The Holy Spirit of God. Is living in me. He is helping me. To grow up spiritually. And live the newness of life for which Jesus, my Lord, died and rose again. The Holy Spirit is doing everything which Jesus said he will do it for me. So I boldly confess the Holy Spirit is my helper, is my comforter, is my counselor. He is my advocate. 
He is my intercessor. He is my strengthener. And he is always standing by me. God is good. And his mercy endures forever. And through his word, I get to know the truth. And the truth is setting me free in every area of my life. And by his word, I constantly renew my mind. Constantly learning to think in line with the word of God. So that I can prove to myself what is the good, acceptable and perfect will of God for me. In Jesus' name, I thank God and praise Him for God is good to me all the time and His mercy endures forever. Praise God. So, prosperity, today we will learn, is it God's will that His children should prosper? Then what is pros- prosperity? And how to prosper really? We are talking about biblical prosperity. Because the world has got several ways of all kinds of illegal things and nonsense they may do. Because the world way of thinking is in terms of only money. God's way of prosperity is increase and production of wealth. And like God said about healing, He said in, in Exodus, He said, I am Jehovah Rapha, I am the Lord, your physician, I am the Lord that healeth thee. All others are helping us to breathe and be stay alive, to turn to God, use our faith and get healed. Same way, prosperity. Prosperity is not a fixed dollar amount. Prosperity, biblical prosperity, we are going to learn, and you have got to, in order to have that, more than God, you have got to decide. I'm going to have this. Because it belongs to you, and God wants you to have it. Just because God wants you to have, doesn't mean it is automatically going to come to you. So you are going to learn and follow God and manifest that which is already promised, established and provided by grace, by God. You are going to use your faith and not only get it, have it and stay with it. Because the Bible says in Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter, remember The Lord your God, it is He who gives you power to get wealth. What you see in the world is just money running around, used for all corrupt, bad activities. Money, people say, oh, I don't want this filthy riches. That's all religion talking. I don't want filthy money. Remember this, the money as long as it circulated in the world, running around for bad things, when it comes to your hand and my hand, it becomes righteous. Because you are the righteousness of God, I am the righteousness of God. So when money, like a sinner, when he turns to what you say, becomes a saved person, even the filthy riches, when it comes to us, It turns for the work of righteousness. That is why in the book of Proverbs, I'm not making up any of this. In fact, when I began, I didn't know any of this. But I always wanted a good life, always wanted a joyful, peaceful life, a life where I can help others, where I can do something good with my life and with what I have. So in the book of Proverbs says, the wealth of the sinner is laid up for who? 
you and me righteous that doesn't mean oh that means you look down upon them you have attitude that i am better than you none of that what god is saying is as a sinner you will slog and work hard and you won't be able to enjoy that life because you are going to die and still the wealth you what you created will be transferred for righteous work and that is how god started all these things so before we establish today three things we will establish from the bible it's not my opinion but this works you say how do you know that once upon a time i was the most beat up terrorized poor man them days are gone forever right from the age of 9 my parents you know we come from a very poor family my parents i have a large family we were we are seven children and i am the elder so all responsibility is mine the way they taught me responsibilities when anything went wrong i am responsible but that is not what god way of responsibility is but i remember as a 9 year old boy my father had borrowed some money from somewhere some you know he borrows if you are not moving he will borrow from you anybody standing there he has got the knack he was a gambler he will borrow money and gamble we suffered a lot and i remember one of our close relative pulled a knife and said i am just standing next to my father little boy looking i'm thinking they're all relatives and a small amount he didn't repay so he wielded a knife and threatened that he will kill my father and his children that 9 year old boy i decided in my life i will not be like my dad in that area and i will not be poor i'll find a way and be wealthy the way is get saved be born again read your bible follow jesus christ you'll never be poor in your life because the bible says in the beginning how what is prosperity a prosperity is not a dollar amount even though my, that is how we handle things first and foremost why prosperity before we establish is it god's will for you to prosper why prosper in the first place and if it is god's will to prosper then how do i do it can it be done or is it all just empty sermons to talk and think about and then just look you know at other people who are having more than enough and look at that oh how come they are blessed more than me this is real and you have to know the difference between the world way what they are saying there's a god's way and god himself said in isaiah 55 my ways are higher than your ways so if you are you don't have to have great degree knowledge all kinds of you know qualification all you need to recognize yeah god is big god is great so better whether i fully understand or not i'm going to listen to him and he will show me his ways and i will be what god wants me to be and that comes by a decision you got to decide so i'm going to it may look like you know it is taking for some people longer time doesn't matter because you see in the bible it says god showed his ways to moses and his actions to the people of israel you don't want to be one of those people who just sits down and look at the actions of god other people getting blessed you want to be like moses so that you know the ways of god then when you know the ways of god god used moses to show his greatness to everybody that is the reason you are born again that is the reason you are a christian you are you don't follow a christian religion you have a relationship with the living father and he loves you 
beyond your imagination he really 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 wants you to have exceedingly abundantly more than you can ever ask think pray or dare desire so that god said the purpose of prosperity is this before anything he planned this is what it says i will read it in genesis the first chapter you must know this if you are, if you are a born again believer you must know and if you decide all these days you must have read lot of books you must have uh, gone to even great financial seminar i would humbly suggest pack them all and put it in the back side somewhere start afresh turn to god god will never fail you god will once he starts prospering you there is no looking back because that is how god has established and i want to teach you because i care for you i want to teach you because i see it works in my life i was minding my own business i was so happy when i learned all this thing i said oh, wow i'm going to be so you know prosperous and blessed life i'm going to have and my favorite prayer was in matthew 9 lord send forth the laborers the harvest is full send forth the laborers and i became one of the laborer god said what are you simply asking get up to work i'm teaching this not to get money from you i'm teaching this because i have a promise from god as a pastor that my congregation will be the most flourishing successful healthy prosperous congregation i am not just one more another sunday pastor by profession i have been an accountant and the way accountants are trained is at the end of the year you see the result if it doesn't produce result i'll tell god listen this is not working maybe i don't know or maybe you are not called i would rather shut it down and go but you know what that will never happen i have that assurance because in the beginning the first 5 years of my pastor would here in this city every monday i have resigned fought with my wife and said i am not i don't want to be pastor she said jay that's a good idea you are telling me every day i am your wife i have to listen to this every monday you say this why don't you really she called the bluff she said, write the resignation letter give it to jesus if he accepts we'll go somewhere there is nobody to accept my resignation because i was not just appointed i was called chosen and anointed and put to work so you better get serious with god's will you better be ready go out there and buy some big handbags and big boxes because my god is more than enough and he will fill you he will do everything what he promised to every believer who chooses to believe are there any believers here and if you say no oh, be no like religious people oh these are all prosperous he's always talking about money he's always talking about this and that oh this is this prosperity message i don't like it then this is not your church and don't even think that if you go away the church will be closed down there are so many tried they are all gone i don't know where but the home they have god i sent you you are not here by accident you are not here because you know i'm getting handsome by the day you are here to learn good things to glorify god so why prosperity what is prosperity in the beginning genesis first chapter this is god did it we have to accept that don't try to use your mind and analyze and reason that if god says it it is in the bible you say okay this is what it is he wants me to do i will decide and take his help to do it in genesis the first chapter see the 28th verse i'm going to read it for lack of time i'm going to read it in the amplified version 
after god created everything good everything all the universe everything after creating god makes a decision like this to get the full idea we will read from verse 26 onwards where it all began god said let us father son and the holy spirit make mankind in our image after our likeness let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea the birds of the air the beast and over all the earth and over everything that creeps upon the earth so god created man in his own image in the image and likeness of god he created him a male and female he created them and god blessed them and said to them be fruitful multiply fill the earth subdue it why should i do that fill the earth subdue it using all its vast resources in the service of god and man and have dominion over the fish of the sea the birds of the air over every living creature that moves upon the earth so in this verse you see right in the middle of all these good things god inserted the purpose of your prosperity you have all this using all these vast resources in the service of god and man so god comes first this is established throughout the bible one quick example i'll give you when jesus was entering the temple area those people asked peter don't your master pay tribute like you won't pay the temple tax jesus peter looked to jesus jesus told peter go uh, put a hook there get the first fish which comes you will find a silver coin in his mouth take that and you have to watch what jesus said he didn't say when you get the silver coin go and pay them he didn't say that he said take that and pay that for me and you I mean, he put he was the son of god so he put himself first because god comes first man comes later that man includes you also that is why god wants you can prosper but you have got to guard your heart and mind against one thing that is you should make effort not to be selfish second you should not be covetous what is covetousness covetousness a lot of people if you ask what is covetousness they will tell you oh that is bible says in 10 commandment you shall not covet your neighbor's wife so covetousness is desiring things which belongs to others that is only one meaning the real covetousness means you tell yourself in your mind and heart i'm not going to be happy until i get that that is dangerous because god always works in seed form it starts with god or everything starts small but if you stay consistent and continuously focused on what god says that seed will grow into a big tree that tree will produce so much so much of fruit that you won't have place to keep it that's how god operates you should know his ways so he, he has established why you should prosper to use it not hold it use it for god god and his work and for mankind in first others than you if you develop that kind of attitude which can be developed 
God says, I will help you do that. Then, believe me, many, many people here, and those people who are hearing me, you don't know it, but I know it. You are called to handle big money so that you can fulfill what God's word says. Can I get an amen for that? That's what it is. So now we have established why prosperity. Then, what is prosperity? Prosperity is not just a dollar amount. Because if you read the Bible, nowhere dollar or euro or a rupees is not mentioned at all. So as a believer, you should get a revelation knowledge of what God says, and then you have got to apply that by faith. How to apply faith is you believe and speak what God says. So, prosperity is not a specific dollar amount than what it is. And also, we saw what God says in Genesis. Is it God's will that you should have what God says for you? Or is it for just fancy words he wrote? So first we'll establish that it is God's will that you should prosper. Like healing. You should know two things and we practice for a month. You should know God is able to heal you. And you should also know God will heal you. Same way, God, you should know God is able to prosper you. And he will prosper you. Without that knowledge, simply running around and just because somebody confess, you confess, it won't work. So get this. We have got all the time. Until you get it, I'm going to patiently teach you. Go with me to the epistle of John. The third epistle, third epistle, we'll read first three verses. Even though most of the people are interested in the second verse, but I want to start reading from the first verse. It says here, The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. See here, again and again you will find what is repeated in this chapter is, there is only one, one chapter. What is repeated again and again is the truth, the truth. If that is the truth, then the second verse is the truth. What is the truth? Beloved. Who is the beloved? Everyone who believes in Jesus Christ, who is born again. How do you know? Is this the only one verse that says you are the beloved? No. In Ephesians, the first chapter, it says, around verse 10 and 11, that you are accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of all your sins. So God calls you the beloved. So here, it is addressed to the beloved, that is you and me. What is, what the truth says, I wish above all things, that means Number one priority for God. What is the priority? That you may prosper, be in health, even as thy soul prospers. 
So he starts this truth, begin with prosperity, ending with prosperity. In between is talking about you are having abundance because last week we saw the word prosperity includes more than enough, exceedingly abundantly, running over. These are the words used for prosperity. So when you have such kind things in your life, that means you are prospering, flourishing, successful, victory. These are all connected to prosperity. So he says you have all those things flourishing and also to enjoy that you have a good health. There is no use you having plenty of money, everything you overflowing, but you are so sick, holding your stomach, sitting in a corner and three people have to wait on you. That is not prosperity. So these two goes together. People say, oh, pastor, you, what are you telling? This is all talking about spiritual prosperity. Yeah, it talks about spiritual prosperity, all right. But it talks about mainly, because it mentions about your health, this prosperity, more than spiritual prosperity, it is for your, because you live in this body, you need all these things. So God says, this is my number one priority, this is the truth. So you know God wants you to prosper, this is God's will. Then, if it is God's will, how do you know that you are one of them? Why God wants you to prosper? Not because... I went to Bible school, there they told me, or not because I have friends in Texas who have got their own planes and jet planes, and they have got a large ministry, they told, no, I want to know what God said. Don't you want to know what God said? There's no use, because see, many people, that is why they are not making any progress, because they are listening to somebody and try to imitate them and try to do that, it will not work. God says, if you want to imitate anybody in your life, imitate God. Scriptural references, Ephesians 5th chapter, verse number 1. Says, you imitate God. God is a prosperous God. So, how do you know you have to prosper? Because it says first, because you and I are born again, Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. What are the curse of the law? You want details? You go to Deuteronomy 28 chapter, read after verse number 14 onwards. It lists a whole lot of about 42 verses talking about curse. And some of the curses are not having enough shortages Poverty, debt, these are all cursed under the law, along with sickness and disease. Christ has redeemed us and from the curse of the law. People that then when they read that, you have to read, He redeemed you and me only from the curse under the law, not the law itself. There are a lot of laws still applies to us. So he redeemed us from the curse of the law. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. So that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentile. That is you and me. You are not born in a Jewish family. I am not born in a Jewish family. Of course, I got Jewish friends who are born again. They can say, Pastor, no, no, you correct your sentence. I was born as... Yeah, if you are born as a Jew, I was born as a Hindu. So if you and I become together, then I become a Hindu. Don't try to simply confuse yourself. When you get born again, you are a child of God. And the blessing of Abraham has come upon you. You are redeemed from the curse. And it is a promise obtained by faith in Christ Jesus. The scripture says, Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Now we should know what is the blessing of Abraham. Truth, because the Bible says, you, based on the truth, you form your foundation. 
What is the truth? I'm glad you asked me. What is, how was Abraham blessed? Abraham had a three kinds of blessing. You don't only look at Abraham was a rich man. People say Abraham was a rich man. That is not the only one. When God says you have got the blessings of Abraham upon you, Abraham had a three kind of interconnected blessing. The first one was, he was called friend of God. God says, Abraham, Abe, you are my friend. Friend means was, a friend, nowadays the word friend and friendship has got no meaning. It's all confused. People are so confused. Let us, let us stay with the Bible. Friend means one who confides in each other about the things of life. Not friend means, the, the world says friend in need is a friend indeed. So all the time, you can rely on your friend to borrow and never repay him. That is not friendship. This is, this is God's friendship I'm talking. So Abraham was called friend of God. So he, had, he was close with God, number one. That means you and I can be close with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Number one blessing. Number two blessing of Abraham. Abraham was blessed with good health. Long life. He lived for 175 years old. He lived. So that means good health. See, it is one thing to live long. A lot of people are living long. I don't want to live long like that. I want to live long and strong in the strength of God. Walk. When you walk, people should recognize, hey, he, he is a man of God. Come. We have heard about this. That's what happened to Abraham. That blessing belongs to you. Don't listen to the world. I have been to funerals where people say when somebody died young, because you see, they were not taught. When somebody young died, they say, oh, God loved them so much and he called them to sing in their choir. Don't tell lies to me. They were not even singing in the bathroom. You think God will select such a person to sing in the choir? Don't listen. People have said, oh, dying young is a blessing. No way. Living long is a blessing. Because most of the time, God's great things you start realizing after seeing what is the mess, what is happening. After 80 only, you start seeing, wow, good man, God really good. He means it, huh? Moses' life began after 80 years. Abraham is real. God's blessing of promised child came to Abraham when he was 100 years old. I'm going to be skiing with my wife when I'm 95 years old. And many of you are going to be there cheering me up. Because this is a promise you claim. I'm just releasing my faith. By way of teaching you, this is how you release your faith. You believe that, you speak about that. So third blessing of Abraham is this. Prosperity. How did God bless Abraham? That's what we are interested. Here it is written, Genesis 12th chapter. It says here, and let us start from the first verse. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred. And from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee. Curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So this was Abraham's blessing. This was a prophetic blessing given by God himself. What is that? That he will be blessed until all the families are blessed. So that is one main reason you should be blessed, because without you getting fully blessed, other families cannot be blessed. Bible, right? 
Don't say, oh, he's from India, his English, I don't understand. You may not understand my accent, but my English, you will understand. Right? So he says here, and he said ahead of time, even before coming of Jesus Christ, I will curse them that curse thee, because once you are born again, you are redeemed from every kind of curse. Nobody on this earth or in hell has any power or ability or authority to curse you in any shape, form or fashion because you are born again, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, calling out in the name of Jesus Christ, a Bible reading, Jesus following believer, a child of God, no man can curse you. That is, you have got to know that. So Abraham's blessing, God said, I make you rich. Again, when we talk rich, people get all mad. Oh, you're, you're, what is he? He's very rich. Always with rich people. Rich, rich. See, rich means again, automatically don't put your mind on in terms of money, silver and gold and currency. Rich means consistent, constant, abundant supply of good things in life is called rich. That is the meaning for rich. That is why last week we ended our lesson in 2 Corinthians 8th chapter verse 9 said, This grace of God we know. See, it is no longer believing. You should know. What is the grace of God we know? That Jesus Christ, even though he was very rich, he became poor. That through his poverty, you might be made very rich. God says, because of what Jesus did on the cross, he didn't say you will. Reason is, I'm going to show you. If he says you will, then you will sit there under the tree and singing, you know, Kumbaya. And God said, well, no, you have got to play your part. You have got to do your part. And that part you are learning and we are all going to continue doing it. Some of you are already doing. I am not the only one doing. I know in this church many, many are doing. But we are not satisfied in handling medium-sized money. We want to handle big money. I am talking with joy. You are all, you know. How big? Tell us how big. You better get ready. Because Abraham's blessing is ours. God has promised it is done. Now, what is definition for prosperity? Yeah, we can use the word abundance, sufficient, more than enough, overflowing, running over. That's all good. As the Bible defined for us to understand, believe and claim it. I'm glad you asked. Go with me to 2 Corinthians. The ninth chapter. And if somebody tells you in the radio or TV or CD or DVD or MP3, oh, this is all spiritual prosperity, don't even believe, don't even bother to listen to them. If you read in your personal time, chapter 8 and 9 talks about money only. It is not talking about spiritual prosperity. It is talking about money. Money. And how to manifest that is already there. How to manifest that is what we are learning. So in 2 Corinthians, this ninth chapter, this is, I'm going to read the eighth verse. This is the definition and the secret and the truth of that prosperity message of God is hidden in this. If you grasp that and you desire that and decide to claim it, you can have it. People say, how do you know that? I have it. People say, you have it? Can I have your phone number? I don't lend, please. But I can teach you to have it. So what it is, it says here, And God, everybody say God. 
and God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work so i want you to make a note because you will be continuing on this in the coming weeks this verse starts with an and it doesn't simply start god is able it says and god is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work what is the purpose of that and will teach you why the end is put there but first let us see today we are saying from god's god's angle what he is promising what is his ability and what he is promising like we said jesus asked the blind man in matthew the 9th chapter do you believe that i am able right he asked the blind man they said yes lord i believe so this scripture is for us to believe god is able able to do what the definition of prosperity is given same verse to understand more i'm going to read in several different versions but see because this is so important if you grasp this you will not be deceived or intimidated by other people's wrong teaching you will know the truth and what happens when you know the truth the truth will set you free to boldly step out and get what god has got for you and enjoy it publicly before everybody without fear or favor because when god blesses you he adds no sorrow with it so here it is the amplified versions to begin with the eighth verse and god is able to make all grace that is every favor an earthly blessing come to you in abundance see this if you just stop here and listen to this it clearly tells it is material blessing it is not a spiritual blessing earthly blessing is not every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance why so that you may always under all circumstances and whatever the need be self sufficient possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation so that means here money is not mentioned grace and favor is mentioned grace is is it something comes only from god and because you receive grace of god you can be graceful to others you don't insist god doesn't insist that you you work and this will be your wage only devil does that devil says you sin the wages is death god says you don't have to do anything all you have to do is believe my grace is waiting for you you have not prayed for it you have not struggled for it you have done no penance for it you have not promised anything i love you he is my grace but what is that grace it is every favor of god if you read in luke the second chapter it says jesus because he listened to his mother obeyed her jesus grew in stature and wisdom and it also says he grew in favor with god and man see this favor you read in psalm 30 verse number 5 it says the favor of god is for life there's got a lot of great meaning in that the favor of god is for life that means favor of god until as long as you are alive favor of god is there for your life also another meaning is in order to live this wonderful christian life 
in order to live this wonderful, prosperous, successful life, you must first seek the favor of God, not money. Favor of God is what is turned into money, wealth, building, car, everything is turned by the favor of God. So what is favor? Last week we explained, so I brought the same sheet. Favor is, it opens the door for you and causes things to go your way, even when in the natural it may not seem possible. That means favor of God will overrule the natural things. Supernaturally things will start happening. And you will end up getting that which you have put your heart into. Without much struggle, by faith. With the same what God has provided for you. And you got it. Only because you believed and only because God by his grace showed his favor to you and things started happening, you end up having it. So that is what in 2 Corinthians 9 chapter he says that you may abound with all grace and every favor and earthly blessing. That favor brings about the earthly things which are there. Earthly things are material things, which are there to come to become part of you, not for you to take it and hold and lock it up and lord around everybody. That resource you take it first to glorify God. Use it for God's glory, God's purpose, God's glory. Second, you always look out. Is there anybody who will need this before me? When you talk like this, people say, yeah, what is this teaching? World always teach, you know, first you get all what you want. God says, you, if you lose your life, you will have your life, Jesus said. That doesn't mean you commit suicide. Lose your life means you put others first. Abraham did that. That is why you got the Abraham's blessing. You read in Genesis, the 13th chapter, Abraham's nephew, brother's son, Mr. Lot, he came and claimed a lot. And God, Abraham gave him a lot. He says, look around, whichever lot you want, you can have it lot. Sorry with the pun, I love to play with words like this. So he got a lot, but he also got a lot of problems. By the time you come to Genesis 14, Lot was already in trouble. Everything was robbed from him. But Abraham didn't even hesitate. He was so generous. He said, see, don't fight with my people. And Abraham and Lot's blessing was so overflowing, the land could not contain. They had to separate. So Abraham said, okay, don't fuss with me. Don't take what you want. Just go in peace. And our mind thinks, oh, if really it happens like that, what will happen to me? I worked all. Remember, your prosperity increase comes by God's grace, your faith. And when God keeps giving, nobody will take it away from you. If you have fear and doubt, you are not in faith. It won't work. So, God says, every favor, an earthly blessing. So, prosperity is... Constantly staying in connection with God. Prosper your soul. How does your soul prosper? Your soul is basically your mind and emotion. Your soul and mind and emotion prospers first by the word of God. And also the types of thoughts you allow in your mind. The thought All the thoughts you allow in your mind determines the result. Whether you will be poor or prosperous. If you constantly talk about what you don't have, 
If you constantly talk about, oh, I have to pay this house, oh, I got this debt, oh, I got, I owe this fellow, oh, I don't have enough, oh, we cannot afford, oh, this is too strong, oh, the cost of living is go up, oh, I am already retired, I don't have enough retirement savings, oh, I don't have mutual fund, oh, I... if you keep talking your problem and keep talking about poor, being poor, even though you have here and there, you may have a house, you may have some property, you may have some inheritance coming, but they are not your source. God is your source. So first thing, your thoughts are formed from what is coming out of your mouth. So correct that thoughts. See, we, the world religion will tell you, oh, you need to control your mind. Cannot be controlled by God or you, your mind is given to process thoughts. So you decide what kind of thoughts will go in. There are, I have not read any psychological book or anything. It's in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 13 says, we first speak, then you understand. I spoke as a child, understood as a child. The speaking comes first. So during, I even experimented this thing, but I'm interested, not only interested in growing up, I want to be a blessing to others. So in the daytime, purposely, you know, experiment is, sometimes it is dangerous. With God's help, I'll experiment. I say, God, I want to know the reality, show me. So daytime, when I'm alone in the car or anywhere, I'll say things. Just like that. Partly good, partly bad. Knowing what I'm saying, I know what I'm saying is wrong. Then I will go to sleep. Right and up between 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock, whatever I said will come in the form of different, different thoughts. And they form, sometimes it will cause anxiety. Sometimes it will cause fear. Sometimes it will simply wake you up and keep you awake. Try to process that thought, which is basically sown by me during the day. So next day I say, wait a minute now. If this is happening based on, okay, 1 Corinthians 13 says, I spoke first, then I understood, to understand you need thoughts. So I said, next day I will say good things, all from the Bible. I say, oh, I am so blessed. I'm... Then those thoughts will come. And there are times I have woken up, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. This is not a doctrine. This is real. Find myself praying in tongues. Because my spirit is all awakened. Because of what I said. What is going on in my mind? In the mind, what I said is all good things from the Bible. I've been saying things. Oh, God loves me. Jerome, God is loving you, man. And the people whom he's sending, they are all going to be blessed by you. They are all going to prosper. They are going, their lives are being impacted. Their lives are being changed. Like that, you know, when you hear like that, you say like that in the night. The spirit is all so overwhelming with joy and you, many times I have seen myself waking up at 2.30, Daba ka jona bone, chela bar khoshe bara or ya bo, urum lakara plasra tola. I don't have to show, see I am not impressing nobody. I am just talking. When I speak in unknown tongue, the Bible says, when I speak in unknown tongue, it is my spirit through the Holy Spirit within me, prayeth to God. So I'm not imprisoning or disturbing anybody waking up my wife to show that I'm praying. I'm just telling you an experience where it is so real. So you see, our thoughts are mostly created, the primary thoughts are created by your mouth. That's why you remember Jesus always said, why do you think like this? Because it comes what is in your heart. He said in one gospel, I think in Matthew, Luke, the fifth chapter, he told the Pharisees, why do you think like this in your heart? Because when it is in the heart, it comes in the mouth. Out of the abundance of your heart, you speak. So if you put good thoughts, you want good thoughts from your heart, keep on confessing the word of God, then that will produce good thoughts. That is what will register in your mind. And that is a quicker way to renew your mind. I have overcome so much of fear, so much of anxiety, because these things work. So the way you think is important, stop thinking you are poor. Because if you keep on thinking only you are poor, you cannot afford, 
and your mind will cooperate and say, yeah, see, you are only a lady, you are a single mom. Your dad was like this. Your mom was like this. It has got no meaning. What is important is you start saying to yourself, no matter what, God is my source. He wants me to prosper. He wants me to have abundance. To make me a blessing to others. That when you say it like that, it doesn't mean somebody is going to come and steal from you. The thief may come to steal, kill and destroy, but Jesus has come. He is with you. He by the Holy Spirit is with you. He sends you to a church like this. He sends you to read the Bible. He sends you to come and take God's help. And when you boldly confess, then you say, no matter what, I will not lack any good thing in my life. Psalm 34 says, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but those those who seek the Lord shall not lack for any good or beneficial things. So you are one of them. Say, when I used to say with nothing in my pocket, I used to say with holes in my pocket, I will say, I'm going to tithe $500. I will say, I'm going to tithe $5,000. I will say, I'm going to send tithe $10,000. I'm going to tithe $35,000. I'm going to send tithe $70,000. I have done every single one of them. When I had nothing in my pocket, God's favor, God's blessing works. You have got to believe and start thinking in those times. What you think, you become. I didn't make this up. Proverbs, I think Proverbs, I'll give you the reference. Proverbs 23, 7 says, As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So today, if you didn't get anything else, the scripture reference I have given you, you can hear the tape again and rehearse it. But get this, you need to think differently, to need to think differently, you have to change the thoughts is happening in your mind. All my life they've brought me up like that. You will be poor. You will be a beggar. You will never amount to anything. You will never make it. Ha, ha, ha. Because I don't listen to people. I listen to God. You can do that. Say this to me. I can do it. It is not difficult to listen to God. God loves me. God speaks to me through His Word. I receive His grace to spend more time in a day to read the Bible for myself. For God is good and His mercy endures forever. He loves me and He will keep His word as I believe and confess it. My thoughts are changing. My actions are changing because I am a believer. I'm not a doubter. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe my poverty days are over. I believe all my debts are fully paid. I have more than enough. All the time. Because it is God's will for me. In Jesus name. You believe that? Shout hallelujah. Didn't I have breakfast? Shout hallelujah. Praise God. I got to share this more about there are other translations about this verse because this is the key verse to prosper. So before closing, I want to read the regular English version of that verse of 2 Corinthians And verse number 9, 2 Corinthians 9, 8. It says here in the New English Version, And it is God's power to provide you richly with every good gift. And thus you have ample means in yourself 
to meet each and every situation with enough to spare for every good cause and another one i don't know like i said i get always my anointing released when i shower so here is one this is the 20th century version of 2 corinthians 9 8 god has power to shower all kinds of blessing on you so that having under all circumstance and on all occasions all you can need you are able to shower all kinds of benefits to others say this i can and i will for god's glory in jesus name so next week we will continue the lesson also please make effort to join us on fridays on the subject of we are studying the book of gospel of john i am led to say this because of all the books for a believer who wants to sincerely walk in the blessings of god he needs faith and the gospel of john tells how to grow in that faith so i want to see you blessed so friday make some time in the evening join us by zoom and continue to follow jesus with us because it comes in my heart to tell you this i call it my favorite my own scripture you ain't seen nothing yet bless you all have a great day god bless you hello i'm conrad i'm on the media team here at word of his power church Thank you for joining us today. I would like to remind you to check out our website at www.wohp.org and like and follow us on Facebook. We are Word of His Power Church, the place where lives are changed and people are blessed.